Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you're all having an amazing day. The last few weeks, I haven't been able to vlog as much as I would have liked. Unfortunately, I had a minor back injury, which kept me out of action. Luckily, I'm doing much better now, and I intend to do more vlogging the upcoming weeks. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys some macro shots that I took just in the neighborhood this month. But before that, I'd briefly like to talk about the setup. All the shots that I'll be putting up soon were shot on the Canon ATD. Uh, APS-C sensor camera and the Canon 100mm macro lens and I also have the Raynox DCI 250 snap-on lens attached for just some extra magnification. I also use the 600 EXRT flash and my usual reflector diffuser kit. You can learn about my entire setup in detail if you're interested. I will leave links to those specific videos. Let's have a look at the images now. This first shot is that of a drone fly. This was the first time I ever encountered this particular species. I really like those interesting uh, patterns on the compound eyes. Those patches look pretty cool. The second species is a honey brown beetle. What I find absolutely fascinating about this particular species is how the antennae protrude from the part where, you know, usually the eyes would be, but you can see that one section is missing just to give space uh, for the antennae. Here you can see the entire body. And this one was taken at approximately 0.75x magnification, so not even one-to-one -one magnification. I wanted to include a little bit more of the environment. If I zoom in, you can see those tiny little structures on its feet, which it uses to hook itself on uh, the vegetation to secure itself. That is so fascinating as well. The next species is a crane fly. I only have a couple of shots of this. I kind of liked this first image because the entire specimen can be seen. I wish I had been able to stack them, but unfortunately the specimen was moving, so I couldn't grab a series where I could have aligned the different layers. I have another shot just from the side, from an oblique, slightly higher angle. This next and relatively colorful and iridescent species is a soft wing flower beetle. I've got a couple of shots. It was moving relatively slowly on this blade of grass. I really like this next image where a rainbow and just momentarily stopped right next to it and was a bit inquisitive. I didn't witness any interspecies aggression between these two. The next uh, image is of a rubber fly. This one was taken approximately at uh, 1x magnification without the DCI 250. I shot all of these shots at f14 which gives you enough depth of field for most species to get a uh, sharp enough uh, image from front to back. What's the exact uh, species? I'm not sure. I think I can find the genus. I upload everything to iNaturalist. If you want to know about this particular app that I've been using to help me identify these species, then feel free to check out this uh, video above. Okay, let's move on to the uh, next uh, species, which is quite fascinating. I only ever saw this particular species once in my life. About a month ago, I captured a series of shots of this megalirid or megalirid, however you want to pronounce this particular parasitic wasp. I was really lucky because it stayed in one place for quite some time and I managed to grab several shots. You can see how long those ovipositors are. They look like super long antennae that shouldn't really be there. It kept um, twisting and turning its uh, abdomen. Looked quite funny. Wish I had been able to record a video for you guys, but I just wanted to focus on taking images. I cropped uh, this first image quite heavily just to get a little bit more uh, detail. I kind of like the metallic uh, dotted uh, finish or texture of its body. It looks quite amazing. The next species is a potter or mason wasp. Uh, it's a subfamily. I haven't been able to identify the exact uh, species. If you have any idea, please let me know in the comments below. Your help would be greatly appreciated. This was a rather small uh, specimen. I used the DCI 250 for an approximately 1.4x magnification. You can see that even though I use a flash, which normally freezes the action, you can see that the antennae was slightly blurred. You can see the movement uh, with this uh, frontal portrait. And I had to shoot through vegetation. That's why you can see uh, the bokeh just covering uh, part of its uh, body. really liked the super colorful iridescent wings uh, on this particular species. That looked 
quite beautiful. You can see it from the side shot a little bit better. This next image is just uh, another shot of a rubber fly. I think it's the exact same uh, genus that I showed you earlier. I kind of like the minimalistic uh, nature of this uh, image and also that it was staring at us straight into the camera. I really like this next species. It is uh, some sort of a sting bug or a shield bug. I really like these interesting patterns, abstract patterns on its back. It looked quite amazing. Uh, what do you think this next image is? Yes, it is a crab spider. It can be found all over the world and we've got quite a few in Australia. This next set of shots that I'm about to show you is that of a slender ringtail, which is a species of damselflies. All of these shots were taken at the local wetlands. Normally they are quite skittish and if you try to approach them, they fly away. So I suggest if you try to capture them, uh, try to find uh, some specimen earlier in the morning when they are not as mobile, not as active. They are super colorful, beautiful. You can see how massive those eyes are just like with dragonflies, although not as excessively large. Once again, the iridescent colors, the metallic uh, colors and tones on that body are just mesmerizing. These next two shots are of a leaf cutter bee. The leaf cutter bees are so cute and uh, you can see them or spot them just wrapped around the vegetation. The eyes are just so large compared to the size of its body. It looks uh, kind of dead, but they are alive. If you watch them closely, you can see that they tend to move ever so slightly. These next few shots are of a San Andrews cross spider. This particular specimen that I encountered was probably the largest I've ever seen, I've ever captured. I really like these beautiful colors again and the patterns on the abdomen. I've got some shots from different angles, from the bottom and also just uh, from the top so you can see how magnificent this species is. In this last uh, kind of an abstract shot, you can see a super close-up shot of its uh, spinnerets. Uh, spinnerets are used by spiders to uh, produce uh, silk. You can see quite a bit of uh, intricate detail. The next four images are of a butterfly, probably a cabbage white. I'm not exactly sure, so correct me if I'm uh, wrong. We had quite a bit of rain yesterday and you can see that this uh, poor little fella was still covered in uh, many water droplets. Uh, you can see it um, from this high angle shot, both on the side of its wings and the top part of its body, and even on the eye, on the left side, and actually on both sides, were covered by large water droplets. All right, so what's next? Just briefly wanna show you this uh, wingless uh, grasshopper. Unfortunately, I couldn't get at eye level uh, with it. I wanted to have more of the body shown, but it kept turning around as I was approaching. It kept uh, moving around on this blade of grass, and this is the best shot that I managed to grab. This next species is a grass bug. It looks quite weird with its long body. What I really find fascinating about this particular species is that if you zoom in, you can see all those amazing textural details of its exoskeleton and also the colorful secondary eye. In this next image, you can see a few larvae of a eucalyptus leaf beetle. They were quite ravenous. They were absolutely annihilating this leaf. I'm certain that they must consume many times their body weight until they reach the next stage of their metamorphosis and turn into these beautiful, colorful leaf beetles. The second last series that I'm about to show you is that of a lynx spider. Lynx spiders are acrobatic killers, extremely fast, the way they go after the prey. And um, the prey here is an alate, which is a winged ant. I never knew that ants make up part of their diet. I've got several shots from different angles. It was dragging its prey around quite a bit on the vegetation, but I was lucky enough to grab a few frames where uh, at least one of them was in a decent enough uh, focus. The very last series of images that I'm going to show you is of a parasitic cuckoo wasp. Super colorful, as you can see, the emerald green and all those iridescent uh, tones, the blues and purples and the yellows, golden colors, they look unreal. I was so lucky because they are quite timid, quite skittish. They uh, jump around, fly around very erratically. And this one stopped for about, I'd say a minute or so. So I considered myself super lucky. It was cleaning itself, cleaning itself, whatever you want to call it. And I managed to grab these images. I really like this 
last image where it turned its head and it just looked really, really gorgeous. I think I'm going to wrap this up for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you like the species. If you have any type of feedback, please leave a comment down below. If you are new here, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much and see you guys very soon in the next one. Thank you.